I think that Dwee's writing is moving on really well for grade one. He is managing to do his letters quite well. He knows, knows the names of his letters and he's able to form them reasonably well. Of course he needs more practice, but he's got the basic concept and he's doing it, he's managing it nicely. Hello, Hello pagi. selamat pagi. Silakan uh, diperkenalkan namanya. Hello, nama saya Putu Eka Satria Pertama. Sekolah. Sekolah di SD 1 Kayu Pemlaka, kelas 5. Kelas 5 SD. Umurnya berapa Putu? Umurnya 10. 10 tahun. Putu, bagaimana perasaannya sekarang tidak bisa belajar ke sekolah? Tidak senang. Tidak senang ya? ya? Kenapa tidak senang? Karena tidak bisa ketemu ibu guru. Pernah ke sekolah? Pernah ambil tugas. Sekarang belajarnya uh, pakai HP online atau tugas-tugas saja? Tugas-tugas saja. Tidak pakai HP? Tidak. Cita-cita saya mau jadi tentara. Nama saya Kadek Duar Habibawa. Sekolahnya di? Di SD 1. SD 1 Kayu Putih, kelas? Kelas 2. Kelas 2 SD. Umurnya berapa? 8. Kan sekarang pandemi. Pernah belajar ke sekolah? Tidak. Pernah ke sekolah? Pernah. Ngapain ke sekolah? Ambil tugas. Terus sekarang belajarnya di mana? Di rumah. Siapa yang bantu belajar? Pak Putu. Nanti kalau sudah hilang pandemi, Dek Dwi mau belajar ke sekolah? Mau. Cita-cita saya mau dari polisi. The problem is that he can't put the letters together or understand the letters as words. He's unable to do that yet. And that is really vital because he's going into grade two. He should be able to start forming words, but he cannot. And at the way we are with COVID in Bali at the moment, we don't know when we're going to get these children into school. So we just have to see what happens with this latest lockdown, this huge burst of Delta that we've had coming through. But my guess is the children are not going to go back to school anytime soon. My guess is in fact that the children are going to have to continue home learning. And in this case, there's no phone. It's working with a workbook from the school and the older brother helping as the tutor. Siastu. Bisa diperkenalkan namanya? Nama saya Kada Yuliani, umur 29 tahun. Dan suaminya kerja memetik cengkeh. Bagaimana dampak pandemi terhadap ibu dan keluarga? Sangat berdampak sekali. Yang dulu berpenghasilan 800 ribu, sekarang 300 ribu. Itu suaminya bekerja di mana ibu? Di kebun orang. Lalu bagaimana Ibu memenuhi kebutuhan rumah tangga Ibu? Dengan cara uh, memet, memet, ada ketela di kebun. Jadi kebun, dari hasil kebun, ya, dari ya, hasil Ibu tanam sayur-sayuran, ya, ket, ada ketela juga. Ketela ada. Itu dijual Ibu? Tidak, dimakan sendiri. Bagaimana perasaan Ibu saat anak-anak tidak bisa belajar ke sekolah? Sangat sedih sekali. Dia hanya ya. belajar di rumah, tidak dapat mengikuti pelajaran di sekolah, tidak dapat bertemu sama guru dan teman. Ya, terutama Dek Dwi ya, ya. yang belum pernah belajar ke sekolah. Kemudian apa yang menjadi perhatian Ibu buat anak-anak di masa depan? Ya, semoga, semoga anak-anak menjadi anak yang pintar, dan sukses tercapai cita-citanya. My name is Made Pusparumini, but you can call me Puspa. I'm 23 years old. I'm from Banjar, a beautiful village in North Bali. I've been joined BCF since 2012 when I was in junior high school and then 
from the junior high school and senior high school. And after that, I go to college in one of the hospitality college in Denpasar called Mapindo. I take two years uh, hospitality program and then I got internship from Sarong Group restaurant where I should go to study in the morning and then go to work in the evening. And then after I graduated, I got contract to be a staff in Sarong Group. Um, I worked there for more than two years and my last position was a senior surfer in there before the pandemic came. Working in hospitality industry is, um, is amazing for me that most of Balinese people do that because actually we can find a lot of people from other countries, we make a lot of friends, yeah I can like, we also like, uh, I love to serve everybody by my heart and yeah because I, I love to make friends from other countries. <laughs> in March last year was a nightmare <laughs> because I, I lost my job. Uh, it's when the COVID spread to Indonesia, uh, Bali have to close a lot of restaurants, hotels, and then I think like 95% people who work in hospitality lost their job in that time. The quality of life for our people actually is really dropping because people have no job, no income, no money and they can have on like before they can go out from their home like because the lockdown i really worried about the future of bali because it's already one and a half year and bali closed no tourists no job for everybody now bali is maybe take a little bit break yeah uh, we are sad we are stressed maybe depressed because no income but I hope guys, you don't forget Bali because we will ready to say welcome to Bali again in the next future. All the problems and losing her well-paid job and all of that, she's still able to bring in significant money into the family. And, and that is just so different to the families we were talking about in the hills. So the secret is have an educated child already passed school, done the tertiary, you're going to survive. Without the educated child, life is very, very skinny. So, and this is what we do at Bali Children Foundation. We help under-resourced youth like Puspa get through school, get the hospitality scholarship, which was through Bali Children Foundation, get into the internship through Sarong Group, who are friends of ours and have helped a lot of children get great futures. So this, this is our goal, is get the children Make sure they finish year 12 school, get them through tertiary if they're interested and have the capacity. And with that capacity for income, insulate their families against the shock of any kind of disaster or most kinds of disasters. So it's been good, it's worked really well for 19 years. It's worked really well for Puspa's generation. So I would ask everyone to think about Bali, think about how you can help Bali now because I know you can't come here, that's not possible. But maybe there's other ways you can help. Help families that you knew before when you used to come here. Sponsor children through their education, through us and through other organisations. It's not just about Bali Children Foundation, it's about just giving an opportunity for the children to get a great future.